Hey everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History. We're in the Roman city of Trier, which was one of the largest cities north of the Alps for the Roman Empire. This is an incredible city with an incredible history, which also has one of the largest collections of Roman ruins north of the Alps as well. We've got a lot to show you on this episode, so we're going to get at it right now. Behind me is the amphitheater for the city of Trier. This amphitheater is one of the largest surviving in the Roman world. It held 20,000 people at its height. It was built in the second century AD by the Emperor Antonus Pius. This theater is really the beating heart of the city of Trier. You know, this is where, you know, the citizens could come and enjoy engagements of combat, see plays performed, watch public executions. The daily routines of the theater look like this. You would have animal hunts in the morning where basically, you know, men would go out and fight wild and exotic animals for, you know, the entertainment of the crowds. In the, in the middle of the day, they would have public executions where criminals were brought to justice. In the evening was the main event, the huge spectacle, the gladiatorial battles. This amphitheater is a monumental feat of engineering. Actually, part of the defensive wall of the city of Trier cuts right through the back of this amphitheater. Because you have this monumental engineering work going on, it was a great strategic use of the theater in its defensive. One of the things that they would do is, is that if the city was ever attacked, they could unleash the animals from the amphitheater onto the attacking forces. Holding 20,000 people, that's a lot. Trier at its height had a population of 110,000. I mean, that's a comparable stadium to us today. But, you know, it's really haunting to be in a place where literally, you know, men, free and unfree, fought for their very lives on that stage right there. It just really makes you grateful for the 21st century that we live in, that we live in a time where, you know, for Death isn't part of public entertainment, but that's what makes Rome Rome is because there was a time in human history when public death was seen as entertainment. The building that you see behind me is called the Basilica of Constantine. This was built around 310 AD and it was built for the Emperor Constantine or Constantine the Great, the very first Christian uh, emperor or credited Christian emperor of the Roman Empire. Constantine got his political start here in Trier, which is one of the reasons why this has become a, a imperial base for him during his reign and also for his son. Behind me is one of the still standing Roman structures. It's so hard for us to fathom in the 21st century that there are actually physical structures standing from the Roman Empire, especially those made of brick. This is an impressive structure, but why is it here? Why has it lasted so long? because of continuous use. After this building was originally built as an imperial palace for the emperor, when the empire fell and the political situation changed in this city from you know, the Roman administration to the Frankish administration, buildings like this were used and maintained. During the medieval period, it was expanded upon and actually made into a castle. That saved it from arguably one of the greatest eras of historical robbery in all of history, which is a lot of times during the Dark Ages and the medieval period where, you know, Roman structures would be robbed for their building materials. Why go to a quarry and dig out the rock when you can actually go to another, to an already standing, uh, you know, building and take the rock that's already dressed and finished from there? So because this was used as a castle, and also because the building was constructed of brick instead of large masonry stone, which was a primary building equipment of the day, it still stands to this day. Of course, it was used as a church, which also added to the reason why it's still standing to, to today. In the 19th century, this building was rebuilt to its Roman glory, or reconstructed basically to its Roman glory, to about what it would look like back in that period. So it's very few that you get the opportunity to see a still standing Roman structure, and that's one right there. And that's one of the amazing things about this city is there are still structures standing that were built 2,000 years ago. Behind me literally stands the oldest bridge in the country of Germany. This is original, it was originally built by the Romans in 17 BC. The bridge, when it was constructed across the river Mosul behind me, was originally made out of wood. This wooden construction was built more of a defensive mechanism than anything else. Because you see, 
if the city was attacked, which was very likely to happen, the bridge could be set on fire, therefore blocking the city off from any in would-be intruders. What's really cool is, is that this is a bridge that has been continuously used for over 2,000 years. The pillar bases that you see behind me are original from the Roman era and date to the second century AD. The thing about the top part of the bridge is it was reconstructed, reconstructed in the 1200s and then later in the 1400s. The top that you see was completely redone in the 19th century, but what's fascinating is that the pyres themselves, and that's what makes this the oldest bridge span. The pyres at, literally, as you see them right there, were laid down by the Romans. We're standing outside the Roman bathhouses in the city of Trier. These bathhouses were constructed in the 4th century AD. They were built by the Emperor Constantine. Constantine, or Constantine the Great as we know him, got his political career started here in the city of Trier. When he became emperor, he wanted a, a home away from home. Trier became that home away from home for him. As such, he made this a power base for the region. When he came into the area, he really wanted to improve you know, the city's infrastructure and created a lot of public works that uh, still stand to this day. One of these public works is this bathhouse that you see here. What's highly important is, is, is you're looking at behind me a structure that was built by the Romans that is actually still standing, still standing through the millennia. It's a testament to Roman engineering that this still stands to this day. What's incredible is the technology that went into not only building this place, but to maintaining it. I mean, you gotta think you've got water that you've gotta bring in. You've gotta heat up that water. Water was brought in by aqueducts and it was heated up to a temperatures of literally 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The engineering is incredible. This structure still stands because of the building materials used. If you see, it's not built out of major big blocks or anything, but bricks, actual bricks. A lot of times in the medieval world, ruins were then robbed you know the for construction materials of that period so you would go to an old roman site you would take up the blocks and then you would use to incorporate them into your modern construction why go to a quarry and quarry out fresh rock when you can just rob the building next to you that's fallen down because this building was made of brick it still stand it still stands to this day because brick is really difficult to incorporate it was built so well that it was used as a defensive castle in the medieval era this is an incredible site with an incredible history and is it a true testament to Roman engineering that it still stands to this day. We're currently in the subterranean level of the bathhouses. This was literally the beating heart of this center. You know, this is where, you know, water would be carried from A to B, wine, food, drink, linens washed. This is what allowed this structure to function as it does, or as it did in the Roman world. It is a testament to Roman engineering that this even still stands to this day. A lot of the artifacts that were in the museum that we've been visiting during this trip were discovered at this site. It is because of the archeological work that has been done and is ongoing that we're able to get a better glimpse into the Roman world. If you guys have any questions, you can always reach us at Chasing History. And thank you for watching. And remember, history rocks. Behind me spans a bridge. Yes, very good. There spans a bridge, Chase. Very informative. History done, we've come to Germany. We've explained that there's a bridge crossing the River Mosul. Good job. We're gonna redo that because I lost it at the end. And it's just incredible to literally walk in the footsteps of the Romans. I don't like that one either.